Yeah, since we announced this, it's been amazing. We've gotten over 700 entries into becoming the next Michael Waltrip Racing Development Driver, taking it from 700 names all the way down to the top 25, but we made it. I'm excited. I've been having a great time through this process, and um, I can't wait to see who we pick, and I really can't wait to see them on the track. We uh, really appreciate what Peak is doing to give us an opportunity as an organization to look at young talent all across the country. The energy that folks put into this contest and then the energy that we took on the MWR and the Peak side just to get it down to these 25, I think was um, quite an undertaking, but it just shows the potential out there for something like this to help that next stock car star. The intent of this whole program was to tie in, Peak is this small independent family owned company um, that's really around car guys. Um, this idea that I've had for years of, of, of bringing grassroots racers to the forefront to be seen by the people that they need to be seen by. What I was really surprised by was the quality of the racers. You know, I thought they'd just be people sending in resumes just because they thought they'd be cool to enter a contest, but these, these, these guys, these girls and guys are serious, just as we are. Now the fun part. Let's get on the phone and call some of these winners up, tell them we want them to come try out to be on our race team. Patrick. Hello, Mikey. Chris. Wasn't expecting to see you. Yeah, I thought I'd call you up. Hello. Caleb. Hello. Hello, Cassie Gannis. Garrett. Yes. This is Michael Walter calling from North Carolina. You reached the voice mailbox of Loving Rath. I'm currently away from my phone or on another line. Hello, Michael Walter. How are you, Amber? How are you, Chase Briscoe? Good, how are you? I've never been this good. Yeah, hey, I know, I got a deep voice. <laughs> but I wanted to call and give you some great news. I'm with all the folks from Peak, and we've been uh, working all day today reviewing applications to become our next uh, superstar in Michael Waltrip Racing. And you are one of them. You made it. Really? <laughs> oh, my God, I can't believe it. This is definitely a, I don't even know what to say. Good choice. Our, <laughs> I'm glad you think so. I love seeing you racing that car around, and I can't wait to get you down here to North Carolina. Thank you guys so much. I remember when I was a kid looking for that first chance, how special it was when I got behind the wheel of a NASCAR racer. Looking forward to giving this opportunity to, to one of these guys and girls. I will represent Peak for Michael Walter Racing. An opportunity like this only comes once. My racing career has prepared me for this. Racing in NASCAR has always been my dream. This is the most important competition of my life. Nobody, nobody, nobody wants this more than me. This may be my best shot. This is the break I've worked for. I am ready for the challenge. I am. I am. I am. I am. I am the next Michael Walter driver. My expectations were to just get a lot of great young, talented, drivers from across the country and bring them here and just to see who is going to, you know, uh, elevate themselves to be the, the winner. I'm Chris Heim from Hoxie, Kansas. I would say I'm the best option for Peak and NWR is, I mean, I'm original, just, you know, relaxed kind of guy, like to hang out, you know, do normal people stuff and go racing on the weekends. I'm guessing my girlfriend left me a bunch of messages in my bag. <laughs> I love you and, and we'll miss you. Have a great week. Probably find some more throughout the week. I would have to say I'm nervous, anxious, and excited about the whole week. I am a 21-year-old from uh, Pulaski, Tennessee. Uh, it's a small town in Tennessee. I'm sure you can hear it in my accent. I'm also a student at Martin Methodist College. That way I can go to school and have something to fall back on, but continue to race at the same time. I'm coming in with the attitude of I have nothing to lose and everything to gain, so. I'm not even like nervous about it. I'm just excited to see what's to come. So I feel like I'm more of a everything to lose because if I don't get this, I'm done. I'm not racing anymore. Right. So this is it for me. This is my last shot. Garrett Lancaster is 22 years old from Carrollton, Texas. I went to Purdue University where I got a four-year degree in mechanical engineering. And from there, I got a job with Boeing in Houston. I designed a lot of the electrical systems for the, the 787 Dreamliner.
I'm Michael Waltrip, owner of Michael Waltrip Racing, and welcome to the Peak Stock Car Dream Challenge. The nine of you are here because the three of us selected you. I'm Ty Norris, the general manager of Michael Waltrip Racing. Been fortunate enough to be in this industry for 23 years, seen a lot of young drivers come through and make an impact in our sport. And hopefully after this week, we'll find us another impact player. I'm Brian Emmerich, Senior Vice President of Marketing at Peak. And in addition to the competition side, I'm looking for someone that will be a great ambassador for our brand. You are the elite. Hundreds of racers want to be sitting where you are right now. And over the next few days, we're going to challenge you. You will be put to the test in every aspect of what it takes to be a champion racer. There's going to be a winner, but only one winner. Good luck. Go get suited up. The drivers uh, that are here are understanding that this is professionally done. They've got the tools to do it. That's what's cool about this competition. The equipment that they have to do the job with is perfect. So then that has to make you look straight at yourself in the mirror and say, the cars are good, the equipment good, uh, the, the competition is fair, everything's even. I've got to be the difference maker. I've got to be the one that makes, uh, makes this happen. <laughs> To explain your first challenge, I want to introduce two-time NASCAR Nationwide Series champion and winner driving the Napa Toyota, Martin Truex Jr. Welcome to your first challenge, guys. This is going to be car control. As a race car driver, we live and we die by car control. Obviously, you can see difficult little course. It's going to be a challenge. Stay in your comfort zone, be smart, drive to your ability, and good luck. I'm Logan Ruffin. Uh, I live in Charlotte, North Carolina. Just turned 19 years old and going in a, a freshman into college at UNC Charlotte. Been dreaming of racing since I was eight years old and here to try to make that possible. The first module was really cool for us. It's a very flat track with a lot of bumps to the corners, really, really tight corners. It's basically a skid pad and it's a whole lot of having the wheel cut to the right but you're going left. No, he got aggressive early. When he put it in first gear and second gear, he came out, he launched onto the racetrack. He couldn't wait to get on the track. I just wanted to see him on it, on the gas. If you spin out, I might just take that into consideration that you were going for it. I'm not kidding. I'm such a dork. I'm like a three-year-old. Amber Colvin is someone from a small town that somehow fell into a race car, found out she was good at it, and just found out that this is what I wanted to do with my life. All right, Amber. Stand back, boys. Here we go. I like the way she takes that early set. The traits I'm looking for in a driver is aggression. I want them to hop on this competition with both feet and say, I've got this one. You can always slow people down. It's hard to speed them up. That's fast there. That was a good run. That was impressive. She did a nice job. It's all about the slide and controlled slide consistently. You did a good job. Thank you. Impressive. This is our rocket scientist. What? This kid's a rocket scientist. I hadn't raced in four years between when I last raced and when I got the call. So I've still got to get up to speed. He stalled. Come on now. Rocket scientists having trouble. And I stalled the car three times, but as soon as I start to pick up that throttle again, it's it's gone. He's got it now. He's on it right now. Nice, nice, nice. Look at that. That was a nice rally for him. Getting that slide time just right. That's what it's all about. You know, that car control, having that feel of exactly what you needed to do. You did good, man. Thank you. You get back in that rhythm. It's the flow. It's like riding a bicycle. It's like, oh, yes, muscle memory. Wonderful. They didn't make mistakes and they didn't spin out right you know so all these guys are they all they got it quick and they know what they're doing logan ruffin was on it from the word go he was in a low gear and he was sliding sideways and really dogging that car and then amber amber was really smooth but yet still fast her times were right there with the other guys the guy that probably made the best rally was lancaster yeah, because he couldn't get the thing started or yeah. couldn't keep it running. But then once he got got it running, he ran some solid lap times. What do y'all think? That was fun. Let's go try challenge number two, reaction time. This will be interesting. Welcome to your challenge number two. This one's going to be a little bit different. This is going to test your reaction time. So what you're going to be doing, you'll be driving your Toyota Camrys around the quarter mile here at Charlotte. A light's going to come on. It's going to tell you to go left side of the cones or right side of the cones. You've raced, you know why reaction time is critical. Not only for going fast, but for staying out of wrecks. 
A guy spins out in front of you, just like when your car gets loose going in the corner. How quick can you react to it? How quick can you catch it? How quick can you keep your car on the racetrack? Go fast, finish the race, ultimately go to victory lane. If they go through that uh, reaction time zone at 40 miles an hour and don't make it, I want to see a couple of those tries. Then you can back her down and, and figure out how to make it. All right, here we go. Let's do this. Hammering it. Look, there she goes. Oh. 35 right out of the gate. 35 is impressive. She's going for a 40. Oh, God. 38. Damn, 38. Nice. Hey, Come on, girl. She's going fast, man. Bingo. Oh, cone's going down. Unfortunately, I said some bleepers when I hit the cones. It was kind of... <laughs> That was close. She got a, a 35 and a 38, and she got a bunch of fails. But she was going for it, you know? She's trying to get some speed. Let's go, Chase Briscoe. I'm Chase Briscoe from Mitchell, Indiana. My dad raced for 22 years and had over 200 wins, and then I jumped in when I was 13. We got Briscoe right in it. 33 on old Chase. The most difficult part of the challenge was just really trying to find your speed where you felt comfortable that you weren't going to hit the cones. Oh, 31. He breaks. Yeah, he liked it up. Come on, Chase. No breaks. Nice. Chase never, he never hit a cone, but his highest is a 33. My name is Cascanis, and I'm from Phoenix, Arizona. It's hard being a female racing in a male-dominated sport, so this is really important to me in my career to make it into NASCAR. Oh, good one. Wow. See that? Oh, oh let go. Hang on. Oh, that's 35. Who impressed you during the challenge that we just watched? First and foremost, we got to start with Amber Coleman. Went really fast. She was very aggressive. But then she started hitting too many cones. What I liked about her, though, is she made some good passes through at 35, which is impressive. But then she said, I want to really show these boys something. She tried to run through there at 45. I really like Chase Briscoe. What would you see out of him? Just smooth. His, his reaction time was fast. He always had plenty of room. You know, he was good speed, not super fast, but wasn't even getting near the cones. And I thought the, the one person who, who did better in the second session than the first was Cassie Gannis. She, she had a really nice reaction time. Everybody deserves a shot. And certainly all these kids are doing a great job, and it was uh, definitely fun to come out here today and be part of it. Bright sunny day in Charlotte, North Carolina, and another day of challenges wait you guys and girls. We brought in somebody who knows a little bit about racing a car. Second in the NASCAR championship last year, Clint Boyer. This is a fun challenge. A short track challenge is, is something that's it kind of right in my wheelhouse. You're going to have three adjustments, wedge, track bar, and air pressure. So you'll be able to go out there, feel your car out, learn your race car, come in, make those adjustments. You've got to be able to tell these guys what the car's doing so they can help you be faster on the racetrack. When you come to pit road, you can raise the track bar, you can put wedge in or take it out, or you can change air pressure. I'm Caleb Dillard, and I'm from Robilene, Louisiana. This means the world to me. I think it's my chance to prove myself, and I know the shots are right before my eyes, and I just have to do something with it. My grandma has always been there for me, and in 2011, she passed away. <laughs> Seeing her not there at the track, that's the hardest, but I try to carry on each weekend and make her proud. 1802. Feels like I can stand to be a little tighter off. Caleb doesn't need to fix that thing. He needs to fix Caleb. He can't tell the truth. What was his best time? Did y'all hear? 1790. 1790. Yeah. He needs about a second. I am Patrick Staropoli, and I'm from Plantation, Florida. I went to Harvard for my undergrad. I was there for four years, graduated last May with a degree in neurobiology. Yeah, fighting the center, most just got a ton of wheel in it in the middle, and then it's getting loose off because I got so much wheel in it in the center. You got all three of them. What do you want to do? Kind of a tricky uh, deal to be able to pick which one you think would work, because a lot of the adjustments affected the car through multiple parts of the corner, rather than just the one place you know we were having trouble. Put it in. Oh, put it in over there. Wedge in. Over there. Patrick asked them to take some wedge out, and then he said, how much percentage do you think that'll take out? He's already using his brain. Come on. 
Come on, Patrick. Let's see it. Come on. Look at him. He's digging now. He feels it. He tastes it. We got to get him most approved of the session. That's what I'm thinking, too. From beginning to end, and that's what a lot of this is all about. Who just from, from your eye looked like they knew what they were doing on that short track? In the end, I thought Sterapoli made so much improvement that I thought he was a guy that stood out towards, towards the end. Some of the ones that struggled during this competition was Caleb Dillard. He just didn't have the speed. And the adjustments, they helped, but they started so far off that they just couldn't get down to that magical 17 but flat But you have bracket. to keep in mind, this is a competition. Right. Everybody isn't going to win. One of the first cars out was Cassie Gannis, and her speeds weren't as fast as some of the other drivers. She, she couldn't quite um, get down to the 17 flat area. The, the, their day's not over, but they got to pick up the pace. All right, gang, now it's time for the next challenge, the road course challenge. You know, you got to hit your marks, just like out there on the short tracks. But let me tell you something, the right-handers are going to give you a little bit of trouble. For this event, I'm going to bring in my teammate, Brian Vickers, and he's going to help me out uh, judging you guys. Have you ever run a road course? I have. You, you actually, gosh, didn't you win? I Sonoma did, last Sonoma. Year? For him and I both, and for a lot of you, um, most of our career was not spent on a road course. It was spent on an oval, but once you learn a road course, you'll learn to love it. Ready to go out here on this road course and tear it up. Be a little bit faster than everybody today. I did not think driving those Toyota Camrys around there would be as much fun as it was, and uh, just the way the course was set up, you needed to push as hard as you can. Yes, he is. For me, I felt like it was pretty easy to find that line, and then I crossed it. Oh, He's got wow. a flat. Hold it right there. Hold it right there. Hold it right there. So he does have a flat, but he ran a 46. <laughs> not he doing it. Fastest time? Yeah. I see you cheering up there, Clint. You ready? Yeah. That's ready to get fun. some laps. Yeah. Left and right, I guess. Something yeah. different, but... First road course? Yep. He's going to be the guy that's going to go after uh, Star Pole. He's 47 flat. I just had to, you know, really tell myself to, to take it easy getting in the corners and that uh, slower in was going to be faster off. Heim just keeps missing this apex severely. Remember what I told you about keeping your eye on the apex. I thought we'd see more out of Heim out here. He's a couple seconds off out in this road course. He's a dirt racer. I, th it's I thought all dirt racers from Kansas were good road racers. It took me 10 years to figure it out. So I, apparently I was the only one who'd ever run a road course before, which kind of surprised me. That was what put all the pressure on, was everyone expected me to be the fastest. He's got a real shot at making a good time. So that's the second fastest time, right? That's the second fastest time. I actually like road course racing a lot more than oval. They kind of differentiate between who can really wheel a car and who can't. We talked about how fun it was going to be watching him slide that Camry around, and it didn't disappoint. Right off the bat, Steripoli runs a fast lap and then runs off the track and blows a tire off. I mean, he didn't crash, but he kind of did. He went over the lemon, he got over the curb, he busted a tire. Did he get right back to that lemon? That's hard. Lancaster turned it up big time. He's really embraced this competition, has gained momentum, and shoot, he's got to be up near the top of the class. Were you a little bit surprised about Heim? We had so much hope for him. He didn't have a chance coming into this event. Why is that? We have gravel roads. He was looking for the gravel out there. <laughs> Clint, really appreciate you being here. We're going to let you go, and Brian's going to take over the coaching now. Thank you, guys. Have fun. All right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we are. Um, the karting challenge. How many of you race karts? All of you? Most of you? A good bit of you? Karts are tough in general, and uh, especially on a road course. And to be out there for 30 minutes is going to be hard. It just, it just is, but that's why you're here. Uh, you know, to run in NASCAR, it's long, it's hot, it's tiring. Uh, your arms, your neck, everything's going to be tired, and that's what you're going to see here today. Focus on the next turn, this lap, the lap you're in. So good luck. Here are your carts. Have fun, and I'll see you at the end. This is the first time that we've had all of them out there side by side. Every other challenge, they've been separated. You want to race? This is racing. Wow, that's actually a pretty good start. That's an awesome start. Wow. Look at this. Ives already up to fourth in one lap. Here he comes. That's a good line here. I think Chase started right in front of me. I followed him, and we, uh, yeah, we were up to like third and fourth off the first corner, so it's it's pretty awesome. He's in the lead right now. That looks like Briscoe. Briscoe. I mean, Chris kind of got to the front early and got out front. 
Good pass there for the lead. He got aggressive and made it work. Still side by side up here for the lead. Call it. Who could you have said left that lap? And look at this battle for third. Here they are, side to side again. Are they going to go three wide? They're trying. They are three wide. How about the moms and dads over there? That's got to be intense for look them. Look at them. Look at this battle for third. But look who's sneaking in there, Amber Colvin. Amber is there. She's trying to get a spot. She's trying to get a run. They started to get sideways and everything, and then they started to go out into the gravel. Um, so just as they started to get together, I dove down to the inside. Hit the apex of the corner perfect, so it actually ended up being a really great line for me. Um, and then kind of everyone just kind of slid off. Was that Colvin that made her way through all those guys? Yes, and that was Ruffin who got knocked out of the way. Hey, guys, Logan Ruffin broke his throttle cable, I believe, and he's reaching around with his arm and running his gas. Wow. so that he can get laps in. That's pretty impressive, getting out there and making laps. It is. I know that the go-kart race, I may have finished last because I was five laps down because of a, a broken part, but I feel like it, knowing what happened and seeing the situation, knowing that I was fast still, it's, a, it's still a positive thing. Hey, look at the battle for the lead. Battle for the lead. What a great race. In the end, it was just a classic side-to-side -side battle between Chase Briscoe and Chris Heim. At the white flag, I glanced back for just a second to see how much he had closed up. Briscoe's going to have to make a move. Began catching him a little more, and you know the heart rate started going up a little bit, and I had to calm myself back down. I mean, it was a toss-up. I knew when we came back around, it was going to be whatever happened. Can he get inside of him? Oh, he oh, pushes he's gonna, him. Oh. He's race him harder. I kind of got into him a little bit, pushing him up the track, and we had a great drag race to the finish line. I believe, the door I believe Briscoe's the got the line. Briscoe has the line. I mean, who? how can you call this race? Oh! oh who won? Wow. I think Briscoe got him. I do, wow. too. That is, I mean, what a race. I'm wore out. I feel like I just raced for 30 minutes. That was an amazing race. And then at the checkered flag, I mean, there was a couple inches. By inches. And, and those two leaders, and well, actually the whole field, but those two leaders raced each other side by side. They had probably a 1,000 opportunities to run each other off the racetrack, and not once did they, but they raced hard. One cart got off the track. Uh, that was Ruffin. He, he went off the track, came back on the track, but it broke his throttle cable. He showed so much perseverance to come back there and finish the race the way he did. Thank you for spending your time with Peak, and uh, what a cool event. I, I look forward to hopefully racing one of them one day. You probably will. A heck of a race, too. And I got to see one heck of a race. <laughs> Racers, have we ever got a surprise for you today? We brought out NASCAR future Hall of Famer, legend, and my driver, Mark Martin. Today, you're going to be doing the uh, Speedway Challenge. These Speedway races are really important in NASCAR because the majority of the schedule is on mile and a half racetracks. The thing you're going to be looking for uh, today is, is getting a nice arc into the corner. Um, that's really important. Uh, at all speedway races and focus on making your speed from the center of the corner out. We're going to throw another twist into the challenge. But after this competition, it's going from nine racers to three. We're going to cut you down to three finalists. Nobody had any idea that that was going to happen. I mean, they told us we we're going to have some cuts <laughs> and everybody started freaking out after that. So you need to go for it during this competition because if you're on the bubble, this could be the difference between making the finals and not. So strap in, good luck, and get ready for some super speedway racing, my favorite kind. This time trial here on the big track could become the dirt determining factor if it rains. We thought we were going to get six laps, and we were only able to get two because the, um, the weather was coming in. Still not enough gas, I don't think. He can run much harder. We need to see something out of miles here, guys. He hasn't been fast in any of the competitions, really. I'm not the most aggressive driver out there. You know, I, I take it one lap at a time. As a matter of fact, there's several people around our home track at Nashville that, that have given me the nickname Steady Eddie. Let's go, Tyler. Show us now. step up right when we begin to wonder if they've got it or not. If you've never been on a super speedway before, you know, you think it's like really, really different. And it is kind of different, but it really is just an expanded short track. 
majority of the schedule really in, in NASCAR is mile and a half racetracks. This is a big deal for Caleb Dillard. He needs to go out there, be the fastest in this, this competition, and give him a legitimate chance to make the finals. Now look right down to the white line. Great job, Caleb. These guys have never been on a super speedway, and they're up to over 170 miles an hour. It's amazing what they did. Caleb Dillard hasn't even been on my radar screen, but he's certainly stepped up, along with a girl. I think uh, Amber Colvin has proven that she is right there at the top as well. All right, let's go do this. Let's cut it from nine to three. Unfortunately, this is going to be the end to some of your competition. This has been an amazing competition. I love the passion, the heart, the soul. Each of you have shown the smiles on your face when you get out of a car. They were refreshing to me. Unfortunately, there are nine of you and only three chairs. I don't add well, but something about that means that Six of you have to go away. Tyler Miles. Cassie Gannis. Chris Heim. Caleb Dillard. each been very competitive, fought hard, but you've been eliminated. The judges had their criteria that they had to base it off of, and, and there's nothing to challenge with that. I drove the hardest, but, you know, it wasn't enough, I guess. Naturally, there's a little disappointment just because we all came in wanting to be the next development driver. It's definitely a chance of a lifetime for somebody coming from Kansas. Um, you know, just disappointment. You five have made it very difficult for us to figure out how to narrow it down to three. Logan Ruffin. In the first competition, car control. You pulled out of the pit, spinning your tires in low gear and bumping up against the chip. It was like you had me at hello. I loved what I saw there. But when we went to the road course, I thought I'd hear your tires squalling more there. I just didn't see the aggression. And despite the fact that you had me at hello, all three of us have to agree. And we agree. You're in. You made it. Take a seat. You're one of our finalists. Garrett Lancaster. Everybody loves a thinking man's driver. You were steady throughout the whole competition, especially when you consider your lack of experience. Unfortunately, you narrowly missed out. You've been eliminated. I'll be 23 in five days. My window's just about shut. I don't have the money to race. Right now, I don't have the desire to ever race again. Chase Briscoe. One heck of a go-kart racer. 